I just decided, man, I, I just want to stay here. There's too much shit to ride. You can't run from this stuff, man. It's, a, it's like a tidal wave. It's just one of the places, the hot spot. Like sometimes it was Dallas or it was New York or Philly or LA. Well now, man, it's here, Portland, so, you know. I'm not much for like the perfect sunny every day, day after day after day after day. Like I like how it changes, and you have to like change if you live here because you gotta like know what to do with yourself when the crappy weather comes. You gotta either travel or play instrument or make art. See these things. I was stuck on a plane for like 12 hours and I just hid in the bathroom and I drew on all these little cups. Little dudes. This guy's upside down. That's how his life is. This guy's fried. This dude's like the weird cop. Yeah, whatever. Craziest, craziest winter, and then summer comes, and it's like, come out the best. You know what I mean? It's like, in June, in June, the sun's out till like 10 o'clock. So you can wake up at like 12. You still have like 10 hours of light. That's, that's pretty crazy to me. It's not humid. There's not a lot of bugs. I don't have air conditioning in my unit. I don't need it. Uh, good food. Every, every kind of food you like. Anything you want. What do you want? Try this out. Bam, Portland's got all these like hidden gems for like restaurants. So, it's tight though. Best decision I ever made moving here. This is the neighborhood for me, you know? I could skate out of my door and hit all a bunch of stuff, see a bunch of things, you know? I love it. I love it here. 
I think it's a good place for me to grow up. There's a lot to look at, and uh, you know, I like I like crazy weather. I like it when it's crappy. And I love it when it's great. You know, so. I think I, I just wanted to live somewhere that was like really open-minded, and I could actually learn some stuff from just living there, you know? And then I was like, all these skate parks and spots, you know? Man, I run into some crazy people on the streets, you know? It's just bums and there's like hot chicks and it's all just bums, people, hipsters, blah, 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 everybody. Ah. So I, I kind of lost you on that one. What was the question again? Hold on. Is it my dream job? No. I feel fortunate to have a job. Pretty much I show up, survey the damage the previous night, see what there is to clean up. Um, maintenance is pretty much my situation here so I go around take out the trash take out the recycling clean up fix things if they're broken paint over some graffiti you know when I was a little kid it was just I wasn't really that devoted to it I was just more playing with it you know but then I started getting more and more into it. And then for some reason, I decided that I wanted to be really good at skating, you know? I was like, okay, I love this. I want to excel at this. And I came up with the idea that if I skated for an hour every day, I would be, I'd be really good, you know? So I'd skate, or I'd skate, try to skate for an hour every day, at least an hour. That's probably when I was like a young teenager, you know. Poor graffiti just irks me because I have to paint over it, you know. And uh, when people do poor graffiti, you know, just tagging, just a scribble on the wall, because you know, if it's just like. You put this effort into it, you might as well make it look good, right? Because isn't that the point? I mean, the point isn't really just to get it up on every single surface. Or maybe it is, maybe I'm missing the point. But to me, it seems like the point would be you'd want to make a cool image that people want to keep on the wall. That's the trick. A lot less cash. There's no X Games. Um, there's no mansions. There's no mom that's my manager. I haven't broken down in tears yet, but you know, give it some time. Could happen. Um, you know, you're asking before about like you think people will be surprised, you know that here I am working. The professional state of skateboarding is kind of a joke, really. Like, no health care, you know, nothing like that. It's not really a good thing, but, you know, it is what it is.
that's capitalism right there, you know? It's just like any other business, you know? There's a rich guy behind the scenes who's got like a hot rod collection or something, you know? And then there's, he's making all this money off all these guys and whatever, they're just get tossed a couple crumbs. But that's the way it works, you know? I got one last cigarette to keep me warm Waiting on a bus that'll take me back home Breathing like a branch on a willow tree Selling my hip blood out in the city much of the different jobs that I've had it's like I never really I could never you have a certain sense of accomplishment that's how, why you go back every day but this is this is painfully obvious you get to the to the job site or the delivery or whatever you want to call it and you have a huge truck full of hay and when you're done <laughs> the truck's empty you know it's just <laughs> you know and it's not something that you can walk away from it's just you know you're delivering the hay A couple of old dinosaurs doing kids' work because kids today are too lazy to work. I can't imagine life without skateboarding. I, I can't even, there's, I, I look at people every day, people that don't skate and I, I don't understand how they can deal with life. You know, whether it's driving in traffic, it's just like, you know, why don't you look? There's a line right there. What's your fucking deal, dude? Why don't you just go around these people? There's a fucking line. Once I rode a skateboard, it was on. I mean, that, I, I, that was the only thing in my life that made any sense, you know? I didn't make any sense to me. I looked, in the, I looked in the mirror and saw this pudgy little short kid that eventually grew into this over tall, lanky kid, you know? But that was the only thing. It's like I didn't have friends. I got made fun of because I was fat or because I was different or because I didn't because I couldn't, aff my folks couldn't afford Levi's and Nikes. I thought I had a happy family. Woke up one day, my folks were divorced. I thought I was a good guy. I woke up one day, I was the people my parents warned me about. Next day I woke up, I was my fucking parents, you know. I don't know, I rambled again. I, I do that.
I had this bike and put like 3,000 miles on it. Just cruising around the city, you know, checking stuff out, you know, looking for spots. I like riding a bike around the city. Just feels good, you know, to do something else. The coolest thing about riding on the bike is you get to see all kinds of just, it's just random stuff too. It's like skating, but you're just like, it's a little, little uh, softer on the knees. I've never had a driver's license, nor do I want one. I don't care. The bike's fine for me. I can ride a bike, that's cool. I can I can get around town, it may take a little longer. And I'd rather not spend like two bucks a day to get on the bus or four bucks a day to get on the bus and have to arrive with a bunch of stinky people that are like all crowded, you know, like claustrophobic or whatever. The bike's a piece of crap. It's from like the 60s or something. Like a huffy Camaro. It's like horrible. All squeaky and rusty and like uh, mitch match parts, but it gets me from point A to point B. And Portland's so rad, man. There's tons of weirdos, and pretty much anything is normal in Portland. It seems like everywhere, I, everywhere I've ever lived, like people are dicks everywhere else, man. People got egos, and it seems like in 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 Northwest and especially like Oregon, people are way more laid back. And I have carpet in my apartment. I don't like it. Can't wait to move and get hardwood floors, concrete. Carpet's just, look at it. It's like so Mary Poppins, right? Pretty America, white, cold. Look at this ball. Woo, woo. Woo, woo. Yo. Oh. Hey. hey, can we skate your ramp? Uh, I guess you're already skating. For like 10 minutes? Uh, okay. Is that cool? Yeah, I ride my bike and skate by here all the time, and I always see it, and I'm like, ah. Today I was like, man, I need to skate something different, so. Hella cool people. I'm not from here though. So, all you Portland people, I had moved here three years ago. So what am I, what is that? Uh, I'm a transplant to the city. So, uh, let's see what else. Good coffee, cool little coffee shops. Landscapes. What else? Um, I don't know. Skate spots. Duh.
Well, uh, I was living about 10 minutes from here, building a skate park out here, and uh, I noticed that this house came up for rent. And the house we were living at was, you know, so-so. We were kind of not too stoked on it. So I just uh, put an application for this house about a year ago. I've been living here ever since. And uh, it's been great. Skate a lot more, having the park right here. It's been a lot of fun, you know. The bowl is epic. It reminds me of like the old Upland skate park with the full pipe, the square bowl and the round bowl, you know, all mixed together. It's just epic. This best bowl working out there, I think. You know, a lot of people don't like to skate it because it's too, I don't know, it's kind of big, I guess. Freaking best bowl around, I think. If you're bored already, I've got some news for me. Turn it down just a little, cause you might already be half through. I was riding my bike to go work with this dude. Doo, 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 doo. All right, I'll ride my bike. Dude's like, wasn't even paying attention, pulls out and just runs me over. And I was all like laying down under the car and I got up, so I had my phone out. He's all, how are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know, man, you just hit me with your car. No, 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 it's okay, you're fine. I'm like, dude, in my left side, you hit me with your car. Oh, no, 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 you're okay. Oh, it's fine, everything okay, I go. I'm like, no, dude, are you a doctor or something? And he's like, oh, I fixed it. It's okay, everything good. Then you got some money or like, should I call the cops? He's like, oh, no. It gives me 50 bucks. I'm like looking at it. I saw some extra money in his wallet. And I was like, give me all your money. And I didn't go to work that day. <laughs> I feel bad, that was bad though. He was stoked that he didn't go to jail, I guess. Growing up in Donald was boring at times and then exciting at times as well. Like, when I first I moved there when I was really young, I don't even remember how old I was, like 10 years old or something. And I didn't really know how to skate, but I met some kids that skated and we sucked for a couple years. And then they built us a park and we still sucked. And then we got good and people come through and there were sessions and, and it went from being like the most boring place in the world with nothing to do to a six spot to skate. So that's pretty cool. But yeah. And then the kids were stoked. There's something to do other than piss off the neighbors and get into stuff that your parents didn't want you to. So. Skateboarding is a good outlet for that. Isn't that right? <laughs> so when they first built the park, I didn't know how to drop in or nothing. So I used to start from up there and then roll in a flat in the shallow end, which I broke like 20 boards doing in the process. But the dudes that skated here a lot, like the Dreamland dudes they read and all those guys, and all the Hesher dudes that are all gnarly. Got over it. Got over me just rolling in the bowl and not doing anything. So they just like, beat it, cook, and you learn how to drop in. And like, they made this, like, this place is gnarly, dude. So I had to like go other places that were mellower and like over the years, like learn how to skate transition until I was really accepted. For 32 grand, you could have something like this. It's called Dreamland.
You know, they say the right tool for the right job. This is not the right tool for this job. I think I'm a good stiff fucking floor broom. Soft bristle for fine dust just isn't working for these rocks. Ridiculous. This is better than nothing though, huh? So many parks popping up, this, this park won't be just like a park all by itself, you know, out here in the high plains. Eastern Oregon's starting to really happen. Which is good, we've been blowing up, the, you know, Western Oregon, blowing up the coastline for years and up and down the I-5 corridor we've been blowing up, but we haven't really been getting out here. To... Oh, it's on now. <laughs> A baseball field costs like a million dollars. So whenever I go by a baseball field, I hardly ever see anybody play. So I think people have been figuring that out. Every time I go by a skate park, there's like five to 10 kids. So it's like, you know, you get your money's worth out of it. And I think maybe, you know, the cities aren't dumb. They're realizing that, man, these skateboard courts are getting used all the time. <laughs> or skateboard tracks, you know? Course, yeah, I like that word, skate course. And it's like, yeah, the parks, man. You can never, the park's the main thing, man. Because of Dreamland, thank you, Mark Scott, Sage, and all you other dudes. Without them, this place wouldn't be as sick, and I probably wouldn't be living here just because of the scenery. I don't know. I've known Mark since uh, we were probably 16 years old. And uh, just met him on the streets in uh, Portland. And uh, he said he had a cool spot to check out underneath this bridge that there's this little project that was going on over there. So I got in the car with him and he took me down uh, underneath the Burnside Bridge on 2nd Avenue. And uh, lo and behold, sure enough, there was a little piece of concrete that was kind of hand mixed on the ground and slapped up against the wall. We rode that for a little bit. It's pretty cool. Real rough asphalt, kind of hard to get up to. There's a bunch of weird lurkers lurking around, tweakers. And, we still let the hookers come down there, but the vibe's definitely different now. He's a good commander in chief. Uh, we, we obviously wouldn't be where we are now without the guy. He's a hard worker. That I can say. It looks really good out here. I'm stoked. If you guys want to do more custom work, like putting those rocks on the side of that street course or something, that might be cool. Yeah, but I don't really want to... We're going we're gonna to give him a, a free little bit of square footage along the side of the stairs over here. It's a little guy. And then a sneak track. And then the stairs, these kids are real adamant about their stairs, so we got at least pour half of the set. And then the other half could be just the top three or whatever you guys want to do, a zero gap or something. But... Oh my god, I don't believe they destroyed this thing. Look at this shit. Oh my god. Sure. Let's check it out. I see the pool though. I see blue. I see blue. What's up, Zane, Emma? Oh, dude. Take it out. Yeah, there's. Yeah. It's called Res no. Excavator Service. Somebody's. 
shit! Dude. This whole thing was Why? covered. Why? Why? What? Where's all the coping? That's what I was wondering. The, the, guy, the excavator took the coping. I don't believe this shit. Or is it that they probably put it in there, in the rubble? You can't even take a souvenir. I mean, this is bullshit. I, yeah, I, I really can't. I really can't describe him in a way that might. Yeah, he's Dave. Got, got to go to his house and skate his bowl, man. the bowl in his house with his wife, his new wife and her kids and then made more kids there. And if you've been there, if you've seen it, it's just, it's free. It's freedom their style. It's Dave Tobin style, you know. It's about as good as it gets. And the guy works for the city. He's just like, he'll go party with the youngest of kids. He's a little off the wall sometimes. Perfect. Oh, I started uh, scraping gum and cleaning vomit on buses and cleaning graffiti. Now it almost took me 10 years to bid on this job. I always built gadgets when I was a kid, built shockers. And uh, these kids would ho try to hold these things as, as long as they could. And I'd, I'd shock them until they let go and, and build buzzers. And one time I got kicked out of this pool, but in my car I built this huge sound, sound um, blaster. And we blasted the tennis court freaks that were trying to kick us out. And we, and they were freaking out, going because that we were so mad. We got kicked out of this perfect pool, like ten and a half foot, perfect training. When I was like twenty or something. You just got to talk to him. Just talk to him. You'll see what off the wall is. A lot of energy, and he's ready to do things. You'd be surprised. Come on, aren't you? Come on. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> One more day. Sacrifice every day, like, by not having a real job and, like, you know, not making something for my life. But whatever, dude, who knows what could happen, you know, like. Anything could happen, so I just want to enjoy my life day by day and not have to worry. I'll think about the future a little bit, you know, and try, you know, at least make sure my teeth are brushed so they don't run on my head. But, like, I don't really care, dude. I just want to skateboard. I probably would have went with my parents to Colorado or something, dude, and like, I don't even know. Maybe would have gone to college, that would have been cool. But wouldn't have been as cool as, skate, as skateboarding. Maybe I would, I never, you know. You know, you're at the church, you're skating some ledges at a church. 
But then the preacher comes out and tries to beat you up for skating the ledges. Tell me about religion. Shit is crazy. We're almost out. Damn, ghetto ass paint, man. Need to go up to the Home Depot. I know it's ghetto. It's looking real, looking real ghetto, but hey, that's the best thing about 10 second art. I get busted by cops on skate trips. They're like eight years younger than me. A cop, eight, sometimes 10, comes up telling me I can't board. I was like, come on, man. Like, I'm older than you. It's like, what are we really doing wrong? That was, that's about, that's a two piece of, two piece art piece. It's probably gonna go for about two dollars. <laughs> Dude, it's not, it's ain't a reality show. Uh-oh, uh-oh, watch out for these cores. Is it clear? Let's go. Uh, a little slide. You know what I mean? First thing in the morning. Uh, these ones are $29.95 and then six bucks for grip. And then these ones are made by M&M. They're just a little bit more durable. Those are uh, $34.95. I think this reel right here is an 8.2. Want to check that one out? Same wood. That one's an 8. It's, nothing turns out how you plan it. The idea changes from the time you got your template up there to the time you start pouring to when it's finished. Um, some people say it was like an incinerator, some say it was like uh, distributor of like sand and gravel and uh, yeah it's just been pretty much just a spot to lurk at. It is kind of like a toxic waste site like all the nasty stuff's been like under you know and the ground's been burnt and it's not supposed to be bad for you it's just nobody really wants to buy it. That's how pretty much everything's gone down here, just people saving money, hat donations, scrap metal, you know, just anything we can get money from, you know, selling old skateboards at the park, you know, anything. One day, man, we just got 75 bucks together, built our first wall ride. Taking all the railroad ties from the railroads, getting water from the river, stealing sand and gravel, just taking whatever fill we can, you know? Like, most of the stuff here is just built on dump garbage, like old wobbly dressers and RV set big tanks, and, you know, rebar is a fence from around the building. Man, we didn't really know anything about concrete. We just kind of stacked up. Uh, that's about right. It's about right, let's do this. All right. It's a different breed of skater up here. It's more of the pioneer spirit, man. The Northwest is a different thing, man. This isn't a lap of luxury. This is gritty. It's a, uh, it's just, you know, it's working class type thing, man. This isn't a yuppie area. <laughs> Riding around on bikes, saying what's up. Swimming in rivers. Oh uh, yeah, that's it, chilling. I don't know anything else, so might as well just keep cr cruising until it's that day and it's like, all right, I gotta get a job, it's, it's fine. It sounds so weird talking about this shit. I don't like that question, what do you, your future? No one knows to answer your future. You just go, oh man, that month was over, this next month's going. You're like, oh. People ask me that question all the time, you know your future, like, oh man, I'm just trying to get through the day. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. <laughs>
I guess that's when you really start tripping out is when you think too much. Just doing it yourself, you know? Fuck authority, just go with it. Just build with your buddies, having a great time, you know? It's the best, man, skateboarding. I don't care if your legs don't work or you're in a wheelchair or whatever, man, you're in. You know, there's no prerequisite. All you, you could be, I don't know, gay, transgender, midget. I don't care. This is only an escape. It's a positive trip, man. There's enough negatives in this world that separate everybody. We got something that brings people together. It's, 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 from, uh, it's, from, it's from heaven, man. It's just interesting. Skateboarding's done everything and nothing for me at the same time. You know, 